A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Now all things came to be through Him, and without Him nothing came to be. What came to be through Him was life. And this life was the light of the human race. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Now a man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony, to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came to be through him, but the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, but his own people did not accept him. But to those who did accept him, he gave power to become the children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not by natural generation, nor by human choice, nor by a man's decision, but of God. And the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we saw his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, saying, This is the one of whom I said, The one who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he existed before me. From his fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace. Because while the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. The only Son, God, who was with the Father's side, He has revealed God. The Gospel of the Lord. There's a saying that... Uh, when your feet hurt, everything hurts. And there's real truth to that. And, and, and right now we, we are in great pain in the world in which we live right now. Our, our feet, the lowest part of us, are, seem to be falling apart at the seams. And, and yet today I, I want to give you an invitation. And the invitation I want to give you is to put on your dancing shoes. And I want you to have some happy feet. That's what, that's what Isaiah is asking us to do in the first reading when he says, how, how beautiful on the mountain are, are the feet of the one who brings good news, glad tidings, announcing peace, good news to all. I have happy feet today because I would like to present to you some wonderful news. As a matter of fact, the the very best news. And if, if we get it, if we get it, we cannot walk out of this church the same way we walked in today. Although I must tell you, it's, it takes literally a lifetime to fully get it because we've heard it so many times that we become war, word hardened. But I gotta, I gotta say it again. And the reason I gotta say it again is because we really are in pain. We feel cut off, alienated, isolated. I, I've been told that, that the number two cause of young people's death is self-inflicted. And the reason for that is they, they really feel, well, the reason for that is that there's no connection. And the only connections we seem to have today are through a screen and whether we are liked or unliked. And if somebody dislikes us or unlikes us or takes us off the list, we are devastated. And so, we, so we, we've lost the ability to, to make contact. Well, today what I want to proclaim to you is that we are we're going to be able to make contact. You see, we always thought somehow that, that to make contact with, with that which really counts, to make contact with the divine, to make contact with God, we had, a, we had to go up to him. We had to somehow climb up to his holy mountain and, and obey all of his holy laws. And, and that's really true. There's truth to that. We heard in the, the letter to the Hebrews, the second reading that was proclaimed today, that you know, in times past, through the, the prophets, we, we got a glimpse of God. But we didn't get 
all of God. And God was up in the cloud. <laughs> Everything today is in the cloud. <laughs> he was up in the cloud, and, and if we, if we uh, genuflected enough and bowed fast enough, then we, we, can get up, we can sometimes touch God. Well, that's not what we're celebrating today. As a matter of fact, the, the amazing thing that we are celebrating today, and it is utterly amazing, is that we don't have to go and get God. Don't got to do it. Don't even have to try. Because God is coming to us. God is coming down. Oh, it's, the, the price is right, and you can almost hear Johnny Olson say, God, come on down. He is coming down. As a matter of fact, what we are celebrating today is, is, is this incredible mystery. The incredible mystery that, that, well, really for the first 1,200 years, we didn't celebrate as much. We usually celebrated the redemption, the resurrection, and that's beautiful in Easter, but, but not until the time of St. Francis did we begin to celebrate Christmas, to celebrate today. We, there were no crushes. Francis, Francis is the very, very first crush, the first scene, because what's he's trying to say? God's not up there. He's come down. Now, we've got a fancy word for that. We call it the incarnation. And I personally believe that the greatest mystery of all is the mystery of the incarnation. You know, when I was a kid, I always thought that had something to do with evaporated milk. Yeah. <laughs> what it has to deal with is the fact that this divine presence way up here has come down there as low as you can go. Well, and I hope all of you little children sometime after Mass today go up to that crib and look at that little baby. Because you know what you're going to say? It's just like me. He's a kid just like me. And I want to say to you, especially to the children, he is just like you. As a matter of fact, he's left his imprint upon you. He dwells in you. That's called incarnation. And it is the greatest mystery of all. And today it is, it is revealed to us in, in the scripture that we have. You know, nor, normally we, we hear the scriptures from St. Luke where the angels are singing and the bells are ringing and the shepherds go to the major and he's born in this. And it's wonderful, wonderful stuff. We heard it last night. Today, we don't hear the story of, of, of how Jesus came to be born from St. Matthew or the songs from St. Luke. No, we got John, the Gospel of John. And people say, oh, don't read that gospel. It's way up there. Oh, and I told Deacon Tom, yeah, you read that gospel because that's the gospel that brings it down to us. And I want to unpack it a little bit for you because, because it's so important. And the thing about John, St. John, is his, his symbol is the eagle. Now, the eagle flies high. Why? Because it gets a better perspective sees how everything is interconnected. And today, the eagle wants to show us how we are connected to God. And so he, he begins this way. It's, it's a beautiful beginning. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning, there was the Father and the Son. This is, this is before all of creation came about. They are doing what God does, and that's giving themselves to each other completely without holding on to anything, which creates this incredible spirit between the two of them. But nothing, and, and so, so with this word, nothing came to be. Everything that came to be came to be through him. In other words, all of creation carries the Christ. There is nothing in creation that does not have the gem of the Christ, and that's from the very, very beginning. That's from before Adam and Eve's fall. That, that, that's from ever. Everything. The rocks, the stones, the flowers, the, most of all the people had the Christ in it, but we never knew that. We thought we were cut off. We thought that when we sinned, that was it. It was over. We're, ne we're never going to get back to God now. now someone's going to have to pay the price. But what we didn't know was that the price was already paid. Because here's what happens. He goes on to say, this is the one who created everything. In him is life, life for the light of the world. You know, we live in darkness. 
We live in a great deal of darkness. And we live in very dark times. But the scripture goes on, John goes on to say, he came in to be the light and the darkness could not overcome the light. What's the saying? The smallest candle can overcome the darkest darkness. And this is the light of the world that comes to us to dwell, well, first of all, in this child, in this baby, fully, fully. This is fully God. But here's the, the neat thing. We get to share in it. We get to share in it. As he, so we. This is the, the Son of God by nature. We are the daughters and sons of God by adoption. Let me tell you something. As an adoptive parent, I got two adopted children. It's the real deal. As the old black matriarch used to say, couldn't love them anymore if I birthed them myself. Yeah. And, and, and God could not love us anymore if he birthed us himself. Here's what I want you to hear. We cannot be separated from the love of God. What can separate us from the love of God? Trial, distress, nakedness, the sword. Paul goes on with this whole list. Heaven, hell, powers, principalities. Hell no. Nothing. That's what we're here to celebrate today. That's what's so hard for us to get. We still feel abandoned. We're not abandoned. He comes down with this, with this beautiful, beautiful saying at the, uh, at the end. He, he came down to his own. The Jewish people didn't get it, and, but he said to anybody who dares to get it, he's going to give you a life that is unspeakable, unbelievable. And then he says these words, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Today when we get to that part in the creed, where we say consubstantial with the Father, he became man, we're going to take a knee. We're going to take a knee. And the reason we're going to go down on our knees is because here's the miracle. The Almighty, the all-powerful God is now infused with matter. We are one. There is no separation from God. There's no separation from divine life. No matter how big of a sinner we are, no matter how much we screw up, we cannot be separated from God. That's the mystery of the incarnation. It's going to take a whole lifetime to really get it and to really see it. See, the secret is to see it. You see, we, we, we are so used to looking at the darkness that we don't see the light. And, and so we've got to learn how to see the light because whenever, when the Christ comes and the Christ is already here, it's going to come in disguise. He's not going to, we're not going to recognize him. I told the children yesterday when we had mass downstairs in the basement, and I, and, and I, and I was advertising for the mass downstairs. I said, come on downstairs. It's immediate seating, and, and he was born in a barn. Get down here. <laughs> and, but, and I told him, and we, we acted out the story of, of, of a beautiful Leo Tolstoy story of, 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 of Martin the Cobbler. Martin the Cobbler was a an old Russian man who had no children, he had no family, but he was a great loving man. And everybody in the little town loved Martin the Cobbler. And one night, the night before the night before Christmas, he has a, has a vision, and the Christ comes. And the Christ says, tomorrow I'm going to visit you. I'm going to visit you, Martin. And he says, oh, how exciting. I'm going to get to lay my eyes on the Christ. And so he's getting all kinds of preparation. He's making a, a wonderful little meal for the Christ and he's bringing out a cloak to keep him warm. And, and, and he's, he's a cobbler, so he's making shoes. He's making shoes because when the, when, the, when, the, when the child, Jesus, when the baby Jesus comes, I got a, I got a perfect pair of shoes for him. And, and the next day he wakes up and he's, he's looking out the window. He's waiting for the Christ. He's waiting for the Christ. And it's a cold and it's a windy day and all he sees is a little urchin outside. And he's shivering and he's cold. And he invites him inside. He says, come stand near my stove. And he, and he puts his, his cloak around him and he warms him and he gives him a little, little cocoa to drink. And he sends him back on his way and the kid is so satisfied. He says, you know, I, he told the child, I, you know, I prepared this for someone else, but you know, I, don't, I don't think he's going to mind if I give it to you. And then somebody else came and, and, and he, he fed them. And then finally, a, a poor woman came, was, 
wearing tattered and rags and she had her, her baby in her hands and, and she came in, 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 into Martin's little cobbler shop and he says, oh, my beautiful daughter, what's, what's, what's wrong with your child? She says, she's, she, he's freezing. And you notice he has no shoes. And he said, you know, I, I made them for someone else, but, but I think they'll fit. So he places the shoes on the baby and the mother goes out. But as the mother goes out, Martin remains sad because he really thought the Christ was going to come that day. And then the light shines and, and the voice of the Christ comes and says, Martin, did you enjoy my visit? He said, I didn't see you, Lord. Where were you? I didn't see you. He said, I was there. Three times I was there. When you clothe the naked, I'm there. When you feed the hungry, I'm there. When, when, you, when you visit the sick or the imprisoned, I'm there. Didn't you see me? Didn't you recognize me? See, that's our job. See him. Recognize him. He's everywhere. He's sitting next to you right now. When was the last time you really saw your child or your grandchild? Really saw him. Saw the divinity in them, the Christ in them, the God in them. It's there. It's there. That's what, that's what this is all about. It's not about, oh, it's nice, we celebrate and remember the stories of Jesus coming 2,000 years ago. Jesus is here. In you, in you, in you, in you. And our holy work is to see and, and bow before the mystery. Today we go on our knees before the mystery and I don't know if you hold, heard the opening prayer today or not, but we said through the, through the, the, the mystery of what's going on, may, may he who humbled himself to share in our humanity, and that's what the word of God who becomes the Christ shares in our humanity. That means our suffering, our pain, our hurt, our weeping, our tears, our cross. May he who humbly shares our humanity allow us now to share his divinity, and we do, and we do. Our holy work is to see that, not just in the least of our brothers and sisters, but in all of our brothers and sisters. And then, to make a pair of shoes, to act on it.